Welcome back to episode number three of Agency Toolbox. I'm your host, Gray McKenzie, and today we are going to be talking about how to set up a tool called Acuity Scheduling. Now, Acuity Scheduling, we dove into last time in episode number two, and I shared why we chose to use Acuity for our agency guava box and software company Do Inbound over the alternatives. So if you're curious about the reasons that we made that decision, go back and watch episode number two. But if you tuned into that or you have some familiarity with Acuity Scheduling, and you're running a marketing agency, I think this episode is going to be super helpful to you. We're going to dive into the actual back end of our Guava Box Acuity portal, and I'm going to share with you guys exactly what we've set up and how you can set up your own portal uh, to maximize your efficiency and effectiveness on a daily basis. So just as a quick refresher, last time we walked through this in more detail, but here's the front end where on a custom branded URL, guavabox.com slash chat with gray, you have access to schedule a personal conversation with me for 15 minutes here. And this is a specific event that's been set up inside of Acuity. It's got specific availability. So uh, we can walk through how this works just super quickly. Again, I'm picking a time. I'm going to run through this super fast, and then we're going to dive right in. So I just fill out the information, complete the appointment, and we're good to go from there. Now let's dive into the back end, and I want to share with you guys how this works. So in the back end here, I've got... Uh, right now, I've chosen, this is the back end of Acuity Scheduling, and I've chosen my specific calendar to set my availability. So you can see I prefer to take meetings during the middle of the day, and I give myself a little extra block of time on Monday mornings and Friday afternoons so that I can either uh, recover work-wise from the weekend or prepare and get things finalized on Friday afternoon before I head out. So that's what my availability looks like. Now, each team member is going to set their availability, or you'll set, that, set it for them, um, individually, and you can set this uh, differently. You can override your regular hours uh, if you've got something coming up, uh, holidays, or you're taking a vacation for some reason. But this is kind of the first step is you need to set up, you're going to hook up your calendar, and then you are going to uh, put in your availability. Now, once you have availability, what you're going to do is set up appointment types. And so you can see we've got a whole bunch of different categories, different types of events. And so under my events, you can see I've got podcast interviews, uh, HubSpot support requests, meetings, and uh, or a conversation with me. Now, I've got two different meetings, uh, two different lengths. I usually use the second link here if I, uh, if I need to have an in-person meeting. So I've got a little bit of time for travel, and this one's typically a phone call. It's a little bit longer than a chat. So let's look at the back end here of a quick chat with myself. 15-minute duration. I block off five minutes ahead of time and 15 minutes afterwards. So if that call for some reason needs to go 30 minutes, I don't want to be scrambling, trying to push something back. I also don't want to go straight from a, a prior call into this one. So um, I have a little bit of time blocked off. It's a free event, but here's where I could set the price if the, um, if the person who wants to meet with me has to pay something uh, for that conversation. Give it the category. Uh, give it a custom color. Now that's just going to impact the back end. This is pretty important though. I, I want this event to be set to private. Now, if it's not set to private, what happens? If it's a public link, um, if let me jump back here into choosing my appointment, you will see from this dropdown list, everything that's a public um, item will show up in this dropdown list here. So virtually all the appointments that we have, almost all the time, we keep them all private. So folks will need a direct scheduling link. So if we pop this guy open here, um, you can see here at app.acuity scheduling this whole thing. People will need the direct link. Now we've taken this link and the iframe and I can walk you through that. We will be talking about that um, in an upcoming episode here. But um, but we've embedded that into globabox.com. But, uh, but that's why we keep almost all the events that we have private. You can also choose whether it's a, a group class or event. So if you're scheduling something where multiple people can come in, maybe a workshop for multiple companies or an in-person event, uh, you choose that there. You select what calendars this event can be booked on. So if this was just a quick chat in general with anybody from our team, I'd select maybe Andrew and Ben can also uh, have this conversation. And that's going to obviously open up some more calendar availability um, because the times that I'm blocked, maybe one of them will be available or both of them. And then forms. So I also have included a simple little form. I just want people, if we don't have some reason that I already know about why we're having this conversation, um, I want them to put that in while they're scheduling my calendar. So that's not mandatory, but, um, but that form is included. Then I'd update the appointment type, and we'll be able to see all of that 
on the front end. We can get, we're going to get into how to embed this into your website in a future episode. But for right now, a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. Um, you've got a client scheduling page. Now you've got some simple integrations here. You can control a number of appearance items in here. So obviously you want to pay attention to what's our business name, uploading a logo, uh, time format, time zone, and then a whole bunch of items down here. Now for for the way that we have set things set up right now, we don't have any recurring appointments enabled. And what that would do if we uncheck that is folks could either choose when they set their time zone and go here, they would see, we pick a time, either continue or they'd see a button for recurring right below that. So we have that disabled for right now. Um, client registration, people can register and then there'll be a login link when they come back. Um, and that is, sometimes that'll speed things up if people are constantly scheduling new meetings f with you. Most of the time when we schedule a client meeting, we've got a set time with a client where you know, we're going to have a weekly meeting and it's going to be the same time um, each week or monthly strategy meeting, same time every month. So we aren't, uh, we don't have a lot of folks who have to log back in uh, multiple times, but that's something that you can have if you do have somebody in that situation. And I think that most of the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory. The calendars here at the bottom, so what this means is if you have four different people who are each they're all eligible for an event you can have it pool their availability or if you don't have that checked they'll be able to choose which specific person uh, they're going to schedule with the reason that we have that checked is most of the time they're getting our it's this is a link that's sent out to a prospect and they don't know who they need to talk with yet and so instead of making them choose between four random choices or five random choices we'll just um, we'll just let them pick in the situations where there's a group event um, one of the features that a lot of people don't know about from my experience in Acuity is this ability to change the actual wording of the front end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna load this up. This is a front end editor here, and it, sometimes it takes a minute to load, but it lets you go through and customize pretty much the interaction of everything. So if I choose, I don't want this to say choose appointment. I want this to say uh, select your meeting. I can go ahead and submit that. that will change what that text says. I can pause to continue going through the forms. Um, I'm gonna change this back to appointment. But you can customize all the language, all the language and verbiage that you use in this, uh, inside the tool. So this is a pretty neat tool that um, none of the other alternatives that I have looked at to this point um, have had this. So there may be other ones who are adding it in, but um, really enjoy that. And then advanced CSS, we'll get into this as well, how we've customized um, what it looks like. And at some point, I will show you guys to do the same thing. Real quickly, because I want to respect your time and not take too much time here, but um, just want to show off a couple of the, of the features here. Custom intake forms. So you can um, choose from, similar to using a tool like Gravity Forms or the HubSpot Forms Builder, you can choose what types of questions you want and um, give descriptions, form names, all that kind of stuff. So you can ask people to fill out additional information prior to scheduling a meeting with you. Products and packages, you can set new products in here. Now this we have used um, in a couple situations. Now here's a possibility that you could use. You could set up a coupon where you're, you set up, maybe it's an inbound marketing assessment. You set up an inbound marketing assessment and you give it a a dollar amount, let's say it's $150 to do your inbound marketing assessment. And then, um, and this is, there have been a bunch of psychological studies. We have not used this at Guava Box yet, but it's something that we've kicked around in the past is you put a, put a price tag on it and then give folks individually a coupon code to use to get it at a discounted price. Um, some people have talked about doing this for free. Um, but some way to add some more perceived value to that conversation. Um, that's something that you might kick around and look at. Obviously, you can use coupons like any other store uh, for products if you want to sell products through here as well. They've got reporting. I think that's relatively self-explanatory. Importing and exporting. Um, also, syncing up calendars. So, bi-directional sync for all the different calendars you have in here. 
Your payment settings, I think I mentioned this last time, but you can accept payments using a number of different gateways here, Stripe, PayPal, and Authorize.net. Um, and one of the cool things is this will create a client inside of Stripe. So you can have somebody who's fulfilling a support request, for example, and someone, um, someone requests a support request, we send them an acuity link. They have to enter in their credit card information if they're not an existing client, and it doesn't bill the card at all, but um, they have, so a standard support request, half hour support request will cost $75. Now, if it takes less time than that or more time than that, and we're billing on an hourly rate, we already have their credit card and their approval um, to do that. So that's taken a lot of the back and forth and hassle of billing out of what we do um, sometimes in, in support requests. So that's one way that you can use the tool and hook it up to Stripe or PayPal, whatever your um, credit card processing gateway is, and um, and alleviate some of the pain of going back and forth on support requests that are outside the original project scope. All right, well, that was a lot to dive into. If you have any specific questions about how you should be setting up your portal or ways that, that we've executed this or any tips to offer to share back with the community about how you have customized acuity scheduling for your agency, I would love to hear that. You can shoot me an email at gray at doinbound.com. And if you check back next time in episode number four, now to get access to episode number four, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. But probably the best way to do this is if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Um, but if you are not watching us on YouTube or on iTunes and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, go do that. The other thing that you can do if you want early access is if you head over to doinbound.com slash toolbox, you can uh, get early access to those videos and I'll walk you through how to do that on that page. In the next episode of Agency Toolbox, so this is uh, episode number four coming up, we are going to walk through how to customize the front end. So how to take it from looking like a traditional acuity front end um, that is clean, but it's a little bit bland. It doesn't have all your own uh, customizations to it to something like this that's fully customized and matches in with the Guava Box brand. So that's what we'll cover in episode number four. Until then, get started diving into Acuity or getting your calendar scheduling tool set up. Send me any questions you have, and we'll chat with you soon.